So I've been investing since the beginning of 2022, which means that it's officially been two years since I started putting my money into the stock market. And we've obviously kept you guys up to date with Steph's investment journey, but I think now is a really good time to take a look into what I've been up to. Now to give you guys the high level numbers before we dive into the journey of how I got here, my portfolio right now is sitting at a value of $38,000 and a total return of about 9%. The last time we caught up, my portfolio was sitting at about $20,000 and I was announcing that I was changing my strategy to something completely different. So I'm excited to show you guys how things have been since then. Now to kick things off from the beginning, I've been investing my money with a company called Questrade. See, way back when me and Steph were looking into starting investing, one of the big things that we wanted to avoid were high fees. So instead of looking into traditional brokerages at let's say one of the big banks, we started to look into alternatives that had lower fee options. It's funny because I actually had an investment account at one of the big banks when I was a student in university. And even though I barely used the account, of the few times that I actually did, it was crazy because they would charge me $9.99 just to buy a stock, which to me was just ridiculous. Anyways, the reason I ended up at Questrade was a mix of us wanted to try out both Wealth Simple and Questrade for you guys, and because I wanted to be a DIY investor. See, when we were doing our research into different platforms, we realized that Questrade and Wealth Simple were both great platforms in and of themselves, but they cater to different types of investors at the time. To me, Wealth Simple had a very user friendly interface and approach to investing, something that was really great for the beginner investor, but on the other hand, Questrade had a decent interface, but they catered more to someone who was further, a bit further along in their investment knowledge journey. I personally knew that I wanted to go the DIY route and just build out a portfolio for myself. And at the time, Questrade just had everything that I would need to do that. They had certain accounts and features that Well Simple just didn't have at the time, which we thought would be a really cool contrast for you guys to see. Now, obviously a lot can happen and change in two years. So none of that really matters at this point in time because at this, at this point, they pretty much have a very similar lineup of products and features. But what I will say is that I've actually been thinking about changing it up and moving to somewhere else, but maybe that's something we can talk about in another video. We actually touched on this in our newsletter this month, but back in early 2022, I ran into one of the biggest roadblocks that you can hit once you actually decide to become a DIY investor, which is wondering what the hell you're actually gonna invest in, as in which ETFs and which stocks make the most sense for you to buy. Some of you might literally be going through this and wondering this right now. Anyways, I did a whole bunch of research and landed on this portfolio of just five ETFs, which to me at the time sounded super simple. But what I didn't realize at the time was that in order for you to be like a successful or a good long-term investor, you have to choose a strategy that's not only good for you, but one that you can actually do and implement over and over again. So one that you can actually replicate over the long term. Now I'll tell you this, this one was definitely not it, which kind of brings this full circle back into, into what my strategy has been for the bulk of the last two years. So the last time we caught up, I announced that I was clearing out my entire portfolio of single stocks and ETFs and making the move to only investing in a one fund solution called XEQT. And for those of you who have never heard of XEQT, it's basically an ETF that's made up of four other ETFs. So we're talking ITOT, XIC, XEF, and XEC. Now the idea behind this is to make long-term investment Investing more simple while still maintaining a diversified portfolio. Now, what that means is that a lot of the time when you hear people talking about investing, one of the biggest things you're told is to make sure that your investments are diversified. In other words, don't put all your eggs into one basket or in this case, one company, one industry, et cetera, et cetera. So what some investors will do is they'll buy one ETF that holds companies in the US, maybe they'll buy another one that holds companies in Canada, one that holds companies in Asia, and so on and so forth. Well, XEQT is basically an ETF that holds all of those ETFs for you. So instead of you having to buy ITOT, XIC, XEF, and XEC separately and having to manage how much of each you're gonna buy each month and how much you're gonna actually have to hold, XEQT does all of that for you. You just buy the one fund. Ultimately for me, XEQT has made my life super easy in that all I have to do is buy this one fund every single month and I know I'm good to go. And honestly, for a lot of us, especially those of us that are super overwhelmed already with our day-to-day -day lives, and given the fact that a lot of this stuff isn't even taught to us at any point in time through, throughout our schooling, XEQT is great because it eliminates human error and it eliminates emotions. It's funny because when we and Steph first started our investment journey, we thought that we were gonna be buying long-term ETFs and single stocks. But when I tell you we were wrong, we were super, super wrong. And listen, everyone has has their own different investment philosophy, but for the vast majority of people, unless you have some sort of insider information, the idea of stock picking 
is just, it's just a gamble. Sometimes you're gonna be super happy because you were right, but a lot of the time you're gonna be really unhappy because that stock that you did so much research on didn't do what it was supposed to do. Anyways, with that being said, let's take a look at my performance so far. So for me, this past year has been really, really huge, mainly because I've had the ability to make consistent and higher contributions to my investments on a monthly basis. You guys already know that throughout this past year, I was able to contribute a total of $18,000 or an average of $1,500 a month to my investment account, which was huge. So as of right now, I own 1,369 shares of XEQT. My total return is sitting at just over 9%, and it's actually gone down a little bit, mainly because the average share price on these shares has actually gone up. Once again, that's actually a good thing because XEQT has actually been performing really, really well. So my current average share price is $26.27. And basically what that means is that even though I've been investing in XEQT over the course of the last couple of years, every time I make a purchase, Sometimes the price is higher and sometimes it's lower, which does affect obviously my average share price. Now, because XEQT has been trading at around $28 a share, my recent share purchases have actually been a bit higher than how much I bought all those other shares for. Okay, so now I've got my laptop and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into Google, just regular Google and just type in the ticker, so XEQT, and look at the performance graph. So this is always like a really good way to just check and see how whatever you're investing in is performing. So if we look at the one day, the five day, and the one month, you're gonna see that it's all pretty positive, right? One day we're up, you know, almost a percent. If we look at the six months, we're actually up 7%. Now, what's interesting about this and what I find kind of like really intriguing about this is the fact that short term, obviously performance looks amazing, right? Now, like I said before, we don't care about the short term. We care about the long term. If I'm gonna be investing in into something like this for the next 20, 30, who knows, even 40 years, this, I don't really care about the last couple years, right? It's all just fluff. At the end of the day, if, if we take a look at the five year, we're gonna see that if we go to the beginning of 2022, you're gonna see that we're kind of making our way back up to those 2022 levels, right? You'll see that we're trading at 27, almost $28 a share. We kind of went down leading into 2023. And at the time, you guys will remember that I wasn't really, I was, I didn't really have the ability to invest that much money, if any money at all, I, I think. It might've been one of those years, the one year where um, we, we weren't investing. So anyways, with that being said, you'll see that the performance obviously is making its way back up. But like I said before, short term doesn't really matter. But I am, I am glad to see that we're trading well above what we were trading at before. So $28, I'm happy with. My returns are obviously really good, especially for talking short term. Obviously I haven't been investing for that long, even though it feels like I've been investing for literally forever. But like I said before, this is one of those things that doesn't even phase me whether it's good or bad. It's just, it is what it is, especially on the short term side. The one thing that I'll say is that now it's really exciting because Steph's on her XQT journey. So it's funny because this is something that I feel like she could have done a lot sooner. But once again, like we always say on the channel, everyone is literally on their own investment knowledge journey. So literally like it, it doesn't even matter, right? It's never too late to start something. It's actually interesting because Steph's average share price is $27.61, which is a little bit higher than mine, but it's, it's one of those things where it doesn't even matter because in the grand scheme of things, we own such a small number of shares. And you know, over the course of our lives, we're gonna see that number go up and down. This year, my goal is to invest $2,000 a month or a total of $24,000 into XEQT. Now, if you watched our video on how much we made, saved and invested, what you'll notice is that we do also often pay ourselves an end of year bonus. And what we'll typically do is we'll actually put a portion of that money into our investments. And that's what I plan to do at the end of 2024 as well. Unlike Steph, who recently maxed out her TFSA, I've got some catching up to do in mine, so we'll see how things go. Okay, so that's a wrap on my investment portfolio update. I'm really excited to see how the year goes, and I hope that you guys also enjoyed getting an update from me. As usual, let us know what your thoughts are down in the comment box below. And yeah, if you haven't seen our previous video on what Steph plans to do next now that she's maxed out her TFSA, make sure you check it out next door. And yeah, we'll be back next week with another video.